Galway Races Day 2 preview with Gary Mark of MG Race and Mark listen we had a fruitful enough day yesterday on day 1 at Galway we'll quickly go through the results um, so your head and your ego can be boosted even bigger obviously in the first race yesterday all the talk was obviously around Annie Power and Galileo with the mystical power from Mark Walsh and Willie Mullins Julia obliged Mark you were happy enough with that I unfortunately had a heartbreak in the very first race I tipped up Dark Note at a big each way price around 18 20 mark and um, unfortunately, Keane was just done by a nose on the line for an each way. So you were um, very happy. I was very sad. But um, that mystical power was a, looks like a fair weapon. And Willie looks very, very happy as well, Mark. Yeah, look, thinking back and in hindsight, look, it's always hindsight after the race. But as I said, I was in Ballon Robe that day. Workman like in the bumper. But Paddy did say, it's very unusual for Paddy to come out straight away and say how much school and he had over hurdles and he jumps well. And then to bring him there into that race. But look, the performance backed it up. It, it was phenomenal, and for 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 the trio co ownership with a, with a with a horse like that, bred like that in those colours, it's, it's it's a boost for racing. And look, all eyes are going to be where he runs next. But yeah, very good performance. And as you said, Gary, heartbreak for you. He ran a cracker though. Um, that dark note. I will. I will die on the Andy Slattery on and the and Andy Slattery cliff. I will. T- I'll take him to my grave. But I'm um, no. He <laughs> he gave Dark Note a, f- a fair spin. No, fair. He went out in front. He had a, f- ah, yeah. a fair pair of kahunas to go out in front and, and take take it like that. But look, listen. No no damage done. We move on to second race. Never a dull moment. Julia Blige for Dempsey and Danny Gilligan. Obviously, very interesting. Danny Gilligan. Um, was on his last winner for a seven pound claim. So I don't think that was a coincidence that the lads um had Danny Gilligan there for that. And look, never dull moment. Do duly obliged and um, for yourself as well, Mark. And then we move on to six ten mythology uh for Joseph and Dylan. Um, now as I was saying to you there yesterday, I think C. Deplary um was very very unfortunate. I look, Billy had plenty of chances to come out. Um, but I think the two horses in the two, front two horses in that race were very impressive. But I think C. Deplary, there's definitely going to be loads more to come from C. Deplary. Definitely, but it just goes back to what I was saying. You do need the experience around Galway. It's such an undulating track, especially for two year olds. But I think the best horse won on the day. No, we might be. I completely. Well, I'm sorry to cut across. I completely disagree with you. I think the best horse came second. See the Plary. I say if Billy could ride that, ride that again, he'd ride it differently. But uh, I, I think we'll agree. Time. We'll agree to disagree. Yeah, in the look, fact that hold on now. In the fact that we tipped the winner, which was what wasn't Stevie Wonder could have done that, but we did say back back. See the Plary w- without the favorite as well. But we also mm-hmm. never mentioned Air Commander, who was six to four, and he no, he was you know. It just goes to show you, like, we, we were on par, I suppose. Um, yeah, the lads back, back to the Jays as well, we were a commander late on, but sure, I don't think they, they'll be crying over too much. Going on to the big one, then yesterday, oh. teed up for Emmett Mullins, um, was a very impressive winner, um, 7-2. to two. Again, more bloody heartbreak for me. I was very sweet on Shad Jack with um, Harry Swan, and pun fully intended, I was hoping for a Swan song here for Shad Jack. I thought, coming up the furlong, he was just gaining and gaining and gaining and just wasn't enough in it. But teed up was very impressive. But I was delighted with the run by Shadjack at 25 to 1. Yeah, quick and run, Gary. Um, yeah, I, I, when we were talking about the race beforehand, I was saying he was nearly going to be an each way selection for me. So I'm glad that you tipped him each way. Heartbreak for mine. Hammered Maze runner and just couldn't get a run around at all. And when it did, was very wide, had no chance. So put a line through it. Watching where he comes the next day in one of those big handicaps. 100%. And then we'll go on to the next one. We were actually talking on the phone at the time of this race. Rio Largo for trainer in brackets, Luke Comer. Um, a local winner for Luke uh, with Leo Largo. Um, Rio Largo at 8 to 1. Won't spend too much time in this, but um, no fair play for Luke. He also throws plenty of money back into the game. So, as I said, Luke uh, Comer, trainer in brackets, uh, won that one. And then we move on to the 750. This one is an absolute ball breaker. As one of our good friends, Brian Callan, uh, texts us straight after the race, we basically tipped this horse without actually backing it or tipping it ourselves. You well, cracked you me up. For, well, I did, yeah. So I'm trying to put the blame on both of us there. But no, just, <laughs> this is fully on me. I basically gave the clue that Shane Fawn and Jessica Harrington were going to win this race for a third year in a row. Didn't even contemplate about um, backing your crack me up at 16 to 1. So between Dark Note, between Shadjack and you crack me up, I'm absolutely broken here this morning. But ex Mark was very disappointing. 
very disappointing. I, I thought it was I thought it definitely was going to be in the top three or four anyway with the way the money came. I was happy enough. I was only my I think seven to one if you look back at my bets. And sure he was hammered he was into seven to two at one stage he drifted back out to fours just before the off. But the, the, the support around it. Now maybe it was the JP factor on the day, but he was very disappointed and ran very lazily off the bridle the whole way. But there's still more to come from that horse, I think, watching for the next day. And in the last, as, as per, we said we didn't really have a, much of an opinion on it. And if you don't have much of an opinion on a bumper of Willie Mullins in it, what do you do? You back Willie Mullins. Did we back Willie Mullins? No, of course we didn't. My great mate was very impressive. Drifted out to 92 for Paddy and Willie. And uh, no, Artie Gale was obviously punted heavy as well, back into 7-4 to four, uh, for Derek Connor and Emmett, Emmett Mullins. So, look, it was it seemed to be a decent-ish bumper without actually setting the lights, setting the world alight. But um, look, Jesus Christ, how many times do we have to learn? Paddy Mullins and Willie in the bumper, don't worry about the price, just back him. Yeah, he drifted out to, what was he, into the speed 92? So a cracking, cracking bet for a lot of people who went racing would just lump on the bandwagon of Paddy and Willie. And I suppose they got out with a nice winner. Um, Todd Sharp's horse run a cracker with his young fellow on board. So, um, yeah, definitely ones to, to, to watch in some of those amateur races, Shark and, and young Paddy Hannan as well. He was back in yeah. third, I think, in the end. But the, he was. The, there was two horses punted off and the, the Emmett horse finished second, so they obviously thought a bit of him and ran well. So it's good to see those horses when they do get a punt. If they don't want win, that they do run well up to standard like. Yeah, well, it doesn't bother me if they, if they run well. Like my money is on. I don't really give two flutes. But look, listen, moving on to the first race today in Galway. It's two mile listed hurdle. Um, we kind of spoke about this last night ourselves. Um, look, Paul and Willie at front of the market with observed uh, five to six five. Um, now interesting this morning in franchise has um, for Shark Hanlon and Brian Hayes a bit of money coming in from twenties into tens. It's more than likely just each way money. Um, look, Willie wins it, it's as simple as that. He's first front in the market. I think we're both in agreement. Um, it's fairly boring that Observe, Ab- Absurd will win this race. Yeah, look, we were talking about last night and it just comes down to the fact is the farm horses are Willie's and Paul Paul doesn't really get it wrong too often. Very impressive debut in Killarney and then was second in Royal Ascot behind Vaughan on the flat. So, yeah, look, I think absurd to get favoured backwards off to a winning start here in the first. Now, just interesting there, Calico is is is, is meant, to be, meant to be running here today, but Calico is also entered in um, a, a two-mile handicap hurdle tomorrow as well. So, I don't think, I have a feeling that Calico probably won't run today because Calico, I don't think, has a hope in hell of winning this race. And I'm sure they'll, they'll keep him for the handicap hurdle tomorrow. Obviously, we have a small bit of an interest in it with, with Binks um, running the same race. But, um, yeah, look, we'll, we'll, we won't spend too much time on this. Paul I and Willie thought he might run here, listed, try to get him in top three, maybe. It's, it is a mayor, isn't it? Or a filly? Uh, it is, yeah, but... Yeah, yeah okay, well, it's supposed to be black yeah. type, but then again, you're going up against... Yeah, uh, the interesting, team. if it's an on-runner and goes for that race, we will definitely want to take note later in the week. Um, and we'll move quickly on to the second race, Two Mile Two Beginner Chase. Again, this does not set the lights... Set the world alight. It's fairly dull affair. Sharjah at top in America, one to four. Uh, look, we all know what Sharjah has done over hurdles. Um, Paul, it's interesting to see that Paul is actually riding Sharjah. Obviously, Patrick used to ride Sharjah over, over Timber the whole time. Maris Harper, in fairness, is a decent yardstick. It's great around 137, 138 over fences. And one at beach then for Patrick Flynn. Other than that, look, everyone else is kind of r- running for running for um, place money. Look, Sharjah wins this, Mark, yeah? 100% we were talking about last night and uh, when we were talking last night 4-9 to nine, the 4-9 to nine looks value now into 1-4 to four. obstacles are the key just once, once he gets around he should win easy Four I don't know where, where you're getting four nine value from. You must be a big punter yourself and Icy must be must be punting together. We'll move quickly on to the third race, the seven furlong maiden. Uh, again, very interesting affair. We again we kind of touched on it last night. I know you're kind of not sweet enough on Calispira, but obviously with the experience, um obviously experience from Galway and Maidens is very important. Delic Declan McDonough for Joseph O'Brien and his sister Sarah. Mayfair obviously at the top in the market for, for Aiden and Shamie. Um obviously this is a sister to unless um, look again. I I don't overly have an uh, awful strong opinion on it. I do think Glore tier um, around seven to two. If he does, maybe drift out a small bit more, maybe to fours or so, might be a bit of value. Um, what's your what's your opinion on Calispira? Because I know you're you're going to be back in Calispira. Yeah, what's the eighth day? I'm going to back her each way. Um, she had a nice debut run. I thought done a lot of late work and 
yeah, in, in Joseph O'Brien's mother's and Marie O'Brien's colours with Declan McDonough on board. So, yeah, I'm going to go each way, Calaspira, just for the fact that it has the run. Now, looking back last year, was won by Tahira for Chris Hayes and Dermot Weld, first run, but a one by five and a half lens, and we all know what she went on to do. So, you need that standard to win first time out around here. Now, there could be one, Mayfair, justify out of Clemmy, first of all, of Clemmy, who uh, was the Group 1 winner, won the, the Chibley Park. So, Bread in the purple there, Shamey Heffernan on board. And it's a nice little price of 94 because if this was a maiden anywhere else, Bar Galway, I think it would be around the even money mark. It will lighten a strike twice for Aga Khan. You just you just don't know. And I suppose if anyone's looking at this at the price and going 15 to 8 out to 94, I wouldn't worry. I would worry two flutes about the, about um prices going out um the morning of a race in Galway. If the lads if the lads like it, the lads will be backing it later on. So maybe keep an eye on the market, I suppose close, closer to the race for Mayfair. And look for 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 Tanula as well. Going on to the six forty, the big one, a big one today, the one mile handicap. Um, look again, Blues Empire top in the market for Johnny Martin, the shrew Johnny Martin, Shane Kelly, Joe Masar- Masiria. Now I know this might sound like a bit half time, but I know you. I said to me last night this was your selection. Um, it's gone from tens into thirteen to two. We'll touch on it in a second. Saw Lake City for Aiden and Shamey first time in a handicap one off one hundred one. And my selection, which was current option, well, it is current option. Mark, look, it's ever as competitive. Anything other than Joe Masseria will uh, stand out to you? Um, no, he was my main selection last night. I'm going to stick with him here. Now, the price is a little bit skimpy now. I still like to get that 10s each way. Um, drawn well, loves the ground. Tipped him in the Lincoln, forced him out this season at a big price. Um finished 12th but he was only beating three lengths and then he went on and won and um, he was placed since he's going to love the ground he was one around here he won at the festival last year albeit a lower grade handicap but Colin Keane no Mead when they combine they very rarely leave it behind them Salt Lake City could be the class of the race but yeah now I'm going to stick with my selection Joe Masaria or Masaria yeah I'm going for Edo McGuinness and one of his 100 runners in the race now in fairness to Edo he's um He's kind of gone down the route, obviously, in the last few years of just buying and buying and buying and, and throwing, throwing darts at all these kind of one mile handicaps, yeah. and it's actually working out unbelievable for him. This four of the um, last five years, so he's yeah, yeah, exactly. So look, I'm going to go, I'm going to go for current option, and which means current option will not win, and one of his other horses will win now. But he has um, look, was fifth behind Rami at, cur- at the current May, and um, look, I just think it's a more solid option, f- and it's not because it's the shortest price, but. Keen Redmond takes five off. Again, plenty of experience around Galway. Seven year old will be battle hardened. And um, yeah, current option is my selection there. Look, another one down, down at the bottom. Well, well, was at the bottom of America last night is Mr. Wilson for Gavin Cromwell. He's actually plenty one of, I was looking at myself, Gary. Yeah. Yeah, plenty of plenty of talk around, <coughs> excuse me, for Mr. Wilson. Now, w- what interests me is Mr. Wilson's next go at hurdles. Like, he's rated 83 on the flat. He's getting in off 83 today. Like, he's, he's rated 103 or 102 over hurdles. Um, so, I think, there, or sorry, actually, no, he's gone up to 110 or 111. But I think there'll be another day in him in hurdling. But Mr. Wilson is in good form. Like form figures in 2023. Third, third, second, first, third. Gary Carroll is a is a is a wizard as well around Galway. Stall 17, not ideal, but um again, if you get the break, God knows what happens. So Mr. Wilson is one to keep an eye on there as well. Um anything else, Mark, before we move on? No, no, no. I think you could be hitting the nail on the head there. It's just interesting that we if I look back at the last Four or five years, the winners came from stall 19, 17, 12, 14, and 18. So you can win from the high draws. Right, there you go. All right, I'm going to back uh, current option and Mr. Wilson. Thanks very much for that information, Mark. You're, you're a fountain of knowledge as per. Moving on to the 7.15, the 7 furlong maiden. Um, Right, so at the top of the market, we've got Dermot Weld, Horace Dermot Weld, obviously used to farm Galway. doesn't do it anymore. Livio Milo, peer pressure. Is a second fav joint sorry joint fav a two to one as well roughly two to one for Colin Keane and Joe Lyons and then Nelda for Jesse and Shane Harrington is three to one. I think we're both in agreement here, Mark on peer pressure, are we? Yeah, we were talking about last night. I said it was a three horse race last night, and I'm still sticking by that. Now, what I I took Jesse's out of the equation by saying that she'd only one winner in the last two weeks, three percent straight away. But sure, in the same sentence, I said could turn it around straight away, knowing Jesse, and she did last night with a winner. So they can the floodgates could open now, but. I'm just really liking this peer pressure. I thought she'd have won 
he's made in the last day, but just was a bit unlucky at the start in that. So, yeah, look, I'm going to go with peer pressure. We talked about it last night, and we're not going to stay too much talking about it. No, and look, again, it's was a small little thing about the, the race and Nace in June. Look, we sent off odds on Fav. Um, plenty of money came. So, look, obviously, the yards obviously think some, something of it. And, look, it's just less exposed than Livio Milo. Milo what, Livio Milo has about six, seven runs. Peer pressure is only a two, so look, you'd imagine there's more to come from peer pressure. And look, obviously the wizard in the in the in the pilot seat, Colin Keane. Yeah. So look, peer pressure. Go on. Uh, you'd imagine Livio Milo has reached its standard to an extent. I know it hasn't won a maiden, but with the amount of runs it has, whereas peer pressure is the one that is open to improvement. I think. Just another one. Um, just now uh, it's Alexander John for the trainer uh, in brackets. Luke Homer. Um, obviously has been playing his trade. Because Luke Homer is obviously absolutely mad in the head, playing his trade um, in group races basically all season. Rated, I think, I think he's rated eighty eight or eighty nine. So, for an eighty eight or eighty nine rated horse to come into a maiden, usually to be to be fav or near near the top in the market, obviously because it's trained by Luke Homer. Alexander John might 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 run into a little place money, um, but again, like the horse has probably been flogged um, to, to 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 infinity this year in those group races, but. If the horse is anyway fresh whatsoever, which it won't be because it ran back in Leprechaun Le- Le- on 27th of July, if it runs to its mark, um, Alexander John c- could and should run into a place. So that's maybe one to keep an eye on. Um, 7.50 in Galway today. The 7 furlong handicap. Plunkett leads the market at 5-1. to one. Um, Again, we kind of... I know you have one here, Mark. Gambi Valacci. Um, and I want you to say that in your Italian accent, please. Uh- <laughs> What did I say last night? Number four. Um, Number four. Gamb- there you go. That'll be fine. Gambi Valacci. Uh, we we have to put in the Italian pun. But yeah, no, I was um, I was impressed with this lad when he when he finally got off the American Limerick. Um, soft ground, like the soft ground, but he ran two crackers of races since in in big core Premier handicaps. He was only beaten about three lengths in each of those. So yeah, and you've got that young man on board, Dylan Brown McMonigal, some rider. This lad, he's definitely going to be. The stall worked for a few years. I think he's, he's champion jockey in the making, if you ask me. So, yeah, I'm just going to stick with Gamble Valachi. And, of course, 5-1. to one, You could back him each way there and get your money back if you play in the top. I'd imagine you'll, you'll probably get five places in a lot of places. Yeah, trap around. There's the 11-2 there are paying this morning. Um, I said to you last night, there's one that interests me. Last, if you want. Last, if you want, is one off 88 and 100 before. Runs off 80 here today. Um, again, a small little story behind this. I know, I know the lads who originally bought it, and uh, when it was with MD O'Callaghan and Michael O'Callaghan, um, horses run around Galway plenty of times and knows the track inside out. Um, again, drawn out in Sol 19, but as we said, only 16 run in this race. But I think if Laugh you want gets a good break, Colin Keane as well, um, around 11 to 1 mark is very interesting. And again, my Andy Slattery Cliff, um, Bells on her toes has been punted this morning from nines into 11 to 2. Um, young Keane Organ is riding and claiming seven. Is in great form the last um since since the turn of June has has came second, second, first, and has only gone up three pounds, um, which is incredibly lenient, I think. Um so bells on her toes is of interest as well, around eleven to two, six to one mark. But my main selection is laugh if you want for Jar Keane and Colin Keane. And move on to the last race. I know we don't really have a strong opinion in this mark, but look, we'll run through it anyway. Um, <clears throat> top of the market is Colin Keane again and Jarrod Fahey, locally trained horse at 3 to 1. Kafak for Mr. Slattery, Mike Cliff, and Keane Horgan came in 7 72. And 6 to 1 starting Monday. Just looking around t- time form this morning, starting Monday is fairly well fancied by time form this morning. Um, Gillian Scott is a decent young trainer, Mark, and Billy, our friend, is riding. Um, yeah, no, start Monday. Apparently, this horse was named after me, so Billy tells me because every time I say I was going to do something, I say I'll start on Monday. So that could be one. Now, um, the only thing is, drawn in 21. But other than that, I'm sweet in this lad after his last run. Uh, he's dropped down enough in handicap. He's won around here. He won his maiden here. Uh, Gillian Scott knows the time of day. She's a very shrewd, young, up-and-coming trainer, Gillian Scott. So, yeah, just a small little bit of a bet each way with start on Monday. The draw is the only thing it's... Tron 21, look, you, especially over the distance, it's going to be a hard feat, even with even with the maestro that is Billy Lee on board, in brackets, friend, I suppose, and uh, hopefully we get him on here soon. But yeah, no, I'm going to go for 
starting Monday. Small little bit of a small little bit of a bet each way. Nothing major. Yeah, no, I don't have a, a selection. I have an opinion. Again, it's kind of horses for courses. The Impex kit. This um this horse was with Pioneer um originally. Um, but again, it was targeted Galway. It's plenty of Galway experience and a nice little plum draw in seven today with Shane Foley taking the ride around the fourteen mark. Um, again, it's look. I won't be backing it. And again, it's it's going to be like the. The Jesse and Shane horse yesterday laps you ramp home now without my money on it. But look, it's a game of opinions. Look, he's only won once over 22 runs on turf. Obviously, that's not very attractive, but it's a nice plum draw. Running off 68. Um, Murphy isn't going for a claimer. Um, Shane Foley is decent booking as well. So, look, I'd be going for MPEX, MPEX Kid there. There was a gun to my head, but f- fortunately, there is no gun to my head as of yet. Um, right, Mark, that is um, day two. We're on through. So, we'll go through the lucky 15. Um, I'd imagine that you fairly comprehensively won the Lucky 15 Challenge yesterday, so it's 1 0 to you. Um, what is your Lucky 15 for day two, Mark? We we'll stick with the Euro win Lucky 15. Hopefully, we get the bigger 16s and 20s later in the week, as and we get the each way ones. But I'm going to go with Absurd just to try and get us off to the win and start with Lucky 15. Um, then I'm going to go with Calasperia in race three for Joseph. Um, going to stick with Joe Massasaria in the feature race, and to finish it out, I'm going to put in peer pressure for Joe Lines in the seven four on Maiden. That's my lucky fifteen. My one euro win, lucky fifteen. So your lucky fifteen, good man, Mark. My one euro lucky fifteen will be Glort here in the six ten Maiden. Just hoping that maybe a bit of experience will be enough um, to get him over the line against the, 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 the Aidan O'Brien horse and the Aga Khan horse. I'll be going for current option in the one-mile handicap, um, roughly around 17 to 2 mark. Peer pressure, like yourself, Mark, I'll be going for an SM15 maiden. And my final selection will be, do you know what, I'm going to go back to the Andy, Andy Slatchy horse because I will be back and laugh if you want in a single. Bells on her toes. Come on, Mr. Slattery, get this over the line for me today. Then my one your lucky fifteen is Glor tier, current option, peer pressure, and bells on her toes. Um Mark Listen, thank you very much as per. No problem, Gary. It's been a pleasure again. Listen, I'll hopefully get down to you there later on tonight or some stage tomorrow. Um again, as I warned everyone else um yesterday, mothers and, and mothers and fathers lock up their daughters. Mark is around Galway this week, so obviously be careful if you see <laughs> At least you didn't use that word last night and prowl. I didn't want to use that again today because obviously I, I, I don't want any, any libels coming from your solicitor. Yeah, well, it's too early in the morning to use those type of words. I mean, it's a PG show. It's a 9 a.m. slot. 9 a.m. slot, yeah, before the water. Listen, folks, thanks very much. This will be going out on SoundCloud and on YouTube there later on in the morning. This is MG Race and Gary and Mark for day two of Galway. Thank you very much. Cheers, guys.